Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So uh, today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, the reasons why I invested in Night Shift uh, Company. Uh, you know, this is a company that I, I'm actually really excited about uh, in terms of the, the future outlook and, and growth. And um, let's get straight to it. So uh, uh, Night Swift Company is a transportation company that provides truckload transportation services in the United States and Mexico. The company operates through three segments, which which is trucking, logistics, and intermodal. Its trucking services include uh, irregular route, dedicated refrigerated, flatbed, expedited, dry van, dry age, and cross-board transportation for various products, goods, and materials. The company also provides logistics and intermodal services such as brokerage, intermodal, and certain logistics, freight management, and non-trucking services. In addition, it offers various support services, including repair management, shop services, warranty, insurance, uh, equipment leasing, and trailer parts manufacturing services. And it also engages in, in driving academy services. Uh, the company operates a total of 18,877 tractors, uh, which comprises 16,432 company-owned company -owned tractors and 2,445 independent contractor tractors, as well as 58,315 uh, trailers and 643 tractors and 9,862 intermodal containers. It serves retail, food and beverage, consumer products, paper goods, transportation and logistics, uh, housing, building, automotive, and manufacturing industries. Uh, this company is based out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and was founded in 1989. So it's it's a company that's been around uh, for a couple decades now. Uh, obviously, there's a high demand in distribution, and so this is a company that you know, after researching the the uh, freight and transportation industry, uh, really convinced me in terms of overall company and performance. Uh, so let's take a look at at some of the the key statistics. Uh, here, you know, the, the main thing I'm looking for is the, the price to earnings ratio, uh, tra uh, trailing 12 months and five year average. Uh, this company has a 20 times price to earnings ratio. And when you compare it to the industry, uh, you, you see that the rail and uh, road and rail industry is 69 P ratio. So uh, that that's the first sign that that I look at because this tells me that this company could potentially be uh, undervalued compared to, compared to the industry so so that's a really good sign that I that I found uh, when you look at the uh, five-year average uh, it's it's a little bit higher than the industry average um, so that raises a question as to okay uh, is this company actually undervalued um, and so one one metric that you can determine uh, based on the growth of the company is the peg ratio uh, and, and here they have the peg ratio which is the price to earnings uh, divided by the, the growth of earnings per share and uh, typically uh, you know this this peg ratio is a good indicator as to how how fast the company is growing uh, based on on uh, relative to its price to earnings ratio and you see that this company has uh, night shift has uh, 1.25 and the industry has uh, 3.4 so that's a really good sign because uh, Night Swift is growing uh, just about almost the same rate as as at what it's valued in terms of price to earnings. Um, you know the industry average is three, so you know this is obviously a good sign. It's it's a faster uh, growing company uh, in terms of price to uh, price to book. It's one point one and nine compared to the industry average is six point two. Uh, so that's also another good indicator. Uh, in terms of evaluation. Um, all right, so now let's move on to growth. Uh, so some of the key metrics I'm looking for here is the forward earnings per share long-term growth. And this, this is going to be uh, within three to five years, uh, the next three to five years. And, you know, experts have determined that this, this company is growing at 16.5% uh, compared to the industry. It, it's going to grow at 16. So, you know, here's a, a, an argument that you can can make is that this company is going to grow uh, as probably the same same amount of rates of the industry. So are you better off investing in the index, such as the road or transportation index, or are you better off with uh, Night Swift? 
Um, so again, that's something for you to decide if, if you, you feel like it's worth, it's not worth taking the risk and investing, investing in a digital and in investing in a, a individual company. Uh, maybe you're better off investing in the index. But for me personally, I, I like to uh, take, uh, uh, I like to invest in individual companies because it, it, it makes me more engaged and I actually track the company. Okay. So, uh, the revenue growth is also a good indicator from the last five years. Um, you know, as you see, KNX has, has um, outperformed the industry by increasing its sales by 34% uh, within the last year. And and this is mainly due to 2018. They had a, a really big spike in, in revenue growth sales. Uh, another metric I'm looking for here is the free cash flow uh, trailing 12 month. Uh, this metric I use just to make sure that the company has enough cash uh, to keep running the business. And usually, you know, I prefer obvious, uh, most of the time, that a company uh, has positive free cash flow. Now you see the industry does have uh, a much uh, higher free cash flow of 1.2 billion. So uh, something just to consider there. Uh, let's see here. So um, the next page here, uh, we'll look at profit margins, returns, and debts, uh, solvencies of the company. Uh, so I really like the. Uh, Pre-tax margins here. Uh, they're making 10% profit margins compared to industry. Uh, it's below below industry average. Um, this may be due to the the operating expenses, which are are, are typically high uh, for Night Swift. And uh, but what they're doing is recently they they reduced their operating expense by by nine percent uh, as of uh, 2019 to 2020. So they are working on uh, reducing their costs and. Um, so that should over time help them improve their their pre-tax margins. In terms of returns, uh, return on equity, we're looking at 5.8%. And uh, compared to the road and rail uh, average, the, they're profiting, the industry is profiting at about 7.5. Now, I think this may be due because, because the, the Night Swift has a relatively lower debt than other companies in this industry. Uh, and, and that's that's a good sign for me because uh, you know the typically the the companies that have higher debt you know have higher debt obligation payments that they need to abide to and um, it, it just makes it a riskier company when you're investing in companies with higher debt now if that's your uh, if that's your flavor of, of stocks that you like to invest in great uh, but for a company with with low debt, you know, strong revenue growth, uh, uh, pretty good profit margins. Um, I, I feel good about Night Swift and where they are in terms of their balance sheet. Um, so that's one key metric I'm looking for here as well. Now you can also look at, you know, return on investments, um, you know, 4.4% in the last 12 months, uh, higher than the uh, industry average. And in terms of the debts, uh, here we can look at total debt to asset ratio. Again, look at the uh, total debt. 12% compared to the industry average of 37%. So, you know, I'm taking less risk by investing in Night Swift company and almost gen generating the same amount of returns, slightly less, uh, and taking less risk. And, and um, you know, I feel good about the amount of debt that this company has. Um, the current ratio is a little low. Um, normally, I would like this ratio to be a, a, at least one. Um, so this may be due to the, the lower cash flow uh, from the cash flow statement. Um, so, but again, you know, given the fact that that they have low debt, I feel comfortable that that Night Swift will be able to meet its its uh, its short term obligations, uh, debt obligations. Okay, let's move on. Um, so the the payout ratio. This this is the dividends. Uh, the you know the company is paying some dividends here. So and we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, this is some uh, uh, this is some data from from Zach's research reports, and and they have rated this uh, stock company as a strong buy and, and as an outperformer. So you know their 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 uh, analysis is is indicating that this company will outperform its competitors or the industry. And, and they recommend a strong buy. And you can look at uh, sort of the sales uh, history and their earnings per share history. So in 2018, the company had a, a really strong earnings per share increase. And since then, uh, you know, they had a slight decrease in, in 2019. 
And then the, the sales expectations for 2020 um, is increasing and an even more positive outlook for 2021. So um, based on this analysis, I think that this is a company I'm going to be holding until year 2022. Uh, I have purchased in, in 2020. So I'm looking to hold this company for the next two years. And uh, in terms of sales and history, again, you see uh, 2018, we had a dramatic increase in sales as well as, um, you know, a, a slight dip in, in 2020 due to the pandemic. But, you know, it looks like it hasn't really affected the sales. I mean, it's gone down a little bit, but it, it there's a more positive outlook for the next years to come, which will be 2020 and 2021. Um, and so there's some positive growth there. You know, we have some earnings per share expectations here. So, you know, 2020, 2020 fourth quarter estimates a 90, 90 cent uh, earnings per share. And then for 2021, uh, earnings per share will be 93 cents. Okay, next slide. Um, so here are some reasons to buy. You know, the company's focusing on reducing cost and, and, and maximizing and rewarding its shareholders. You know, um, Earlier, I mentioned that the company is 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 uh, working on inc decreasing their operating expenses. Well, here it says you know total operating expenses declined 9.1 percent year over year in the first nine months of 2020. The adjusted operating uh, ratio improved to 86.6 in the first nine months of 2020, from 88.6 percent in the same uh, period of 2019. So the the improvement is mainly due to lower costs, lower the value of the metric, the better. Okay. Um, Another thing that they that this company did in February of 2020, you know, they they increased their cash dividend by 33 uh, percent to eight cents per share. Um, you know, d during the first nine months of 2020, the company returned 41.3 million to its shareholders in the form of dividends and 34.4 million uh, through share buybacks. Uh, the company's board recently cleared a, a new share buyback program, authorizing the repurchase of shares worth of uh, up to 250 million. It's free cash flow generated uh, supports uh, shareholder friendly activities and the company generated free, free cash flow of 37, uh, 379 million the first nine months of 2020. Um, last reason is we, you know, the company's outlooks earning per share for the full year of 2020. The company expects adjusted earnings per share in the band of $2.68 to $2.72, uh, which was previously $2.15 and $2.30 for the year of 2020. Uh, improving freight conditions might have led to the bullish outlook. The company expects the strong freight conditions to continue. Moreover, the, con the company expects adjusted earnings per share in the band of $3.20 to $3.40 uh, for 2021. So, I mean, there, that's a you know good indicator uh, of what to expect. Now, it doesn't mean this is necessarily going to uh, uh, come to fruition. Uh, again, these are just forecasts, you know, so you kind of have to use your judgment and, and, and determine uh, you know, based on the, the previous metrics we looked at, that they can actually meet these expectations. Okay, next slide. So some of the potential risks, you know, the, the freight conditions are, are weak year-over-year -year basis as the industry. Night Swiss performance in the, in the first nine months of 2020. Uh, you know, trucking revenues, excluding fuel charge and inter-segment transactions, declined 6.9% year-over-year during the first nine months of 2020. The, the revenues uh, with the trucking industry, trucking segment, uh, consist, constituting the bulk of the company's revenues and top line declined 6.9% period. Uh, you know, the truck segment apart, revenues are declined, also declined in the two uh, set sectors in the first nine months of 2020. I mean, this is this is a, a given, given the pandemic. Uh, revenues in the logistics segment, excluding inter-segment transactions, declined 4.4% due to the decrease in brokerage revenues. Revenues in the intermodal segment, excluding intersegment transactions, declined 19.2% as a result of decline in load count and revenue per load. Uh, the company's trailing 12-month uh, return on equity undercuts its growth potential. You know, the company's ROE is 7% compares unfavorably with the industry's 12.4% uh, of reading. Uh, also, its current ratio uh, of measure of liquidity was 7.9 or 0.79. At the end of the third quarter, and current ratio of less than one implies that the company does not have enough liquid assets to cover its short-term obligations. Um, so again, those are potential risks, you know, and, and before investing in this company, and, and you know, if you do invest in this company, you want to make sure that you are comfortable that this company, you know, runs a risk that they won't be able to uh, fulfill their short-term obligation uh, uh, debt obligations. 
you know, I feel comfortable with that with the growth that we're going to see in 2021 and 2022 that the company that the company will be able to meet these obligations. All right, next slide. Uh, so just a, a, some a quick updates on recent uh, news. You know, the the company is obviously has a, a stock uh, buyback program, uh, which is good for investors because. Um, you know, the company is buying back shares, and, and what that does is, is that there's less shares, um, basically, that the, 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 because there's less shares out in the market, in the secondary market, you know, this, this increases, the, accretes to the, uh, the overall uh, earnings per share. And so, you know, a company that continuously uh, issues uh, um, stocks out of the secondary market, sometimes the earnings can be diluted. So I typically like, you know, when I see a, a buyback program, you know, it's it's not a whole lot of value that's created uh, in terms of the business, but in terms of uh, producing shareholder wealth, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a commonly uh, you know used and and I think positive uh, tactic to to increase shareholder wealth. Um, so that's that's one thing that they're they're doing as well. Okay, next slide. And then this leads us to our last slide, which is sort of the valuation metrics. And I think this gives you a, a good overall big picture of, 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 you know, how this company is valued and, and how it compares to the industry. So uh, the main thing we want to look at here is, you know, the S&P index is up 14% and 18% year to date period in the past, respectively. Um, Night Swift shares are up 12% and, and 11% in the year to date period. Uh, and the over of trailing, trailing 12 month respectively. Stocks in the Zacks sub industry and Zacks transportation sector are up 31% and 12% year to date. Uh, over the past, Zacks sub industry and sector are up 34 respectively. So the stock is currently trading at 12 times uh, tw uh, 12 trailing 12 month P ratio, which compares to the 21 for the Zacks sub industry and the 26 for the Zacks sector. Uh, over the past uh, five years, the stock has traded as high as 39 uh, times and as low as seven seven times, and the five-year medium of 15 times. Um, our outperform recommendation indicates that this stock will perform better than the market. Uh, our $46 price target reflects 14 times forward 12-month earnings, and and so again, uh, Zach's uh, research analysts are are forecasting that. Uh, this company will outperform the market, and so that's one of the reasons why I decided to invest is is because of these forecasts and these metrics. Um, so again, some and you know if you want to get some assurance of that or just a, a more convincing metrics, you can look at the P ratio, and and this P ratio has a a twelve times P ratio uh, versus the industry has a, a twenty one times. Um, so you can you can consider that as this company is, is potentially undervalued um, compared to the industry. Of course, it's all it's all relative. And then the next metric you can look at is the the enterprise value divided by the EBITDA, which is the earnings before interest and taxes, uh, depreciation and amortization. Um, the current metric is, is for Night Swift is six point five uh, compared to the industry is eleven times. So. Um, you know, it's it's December of 2020, and I think you know this is a really good time. Uh, personally, and my, just again, this is just my opinion that 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 this company will do really well uh, within the next two to three years. And so that's sort of my investment strategy with Night Swift. Uh, I'll be planning to hold this company to about 2022 early uh, first quarter, and uh, you know I hope this video helps shed some light on Night Swift company. Uh, so if you like this video, please uh, leave a comment down below, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you on the next video. Thank you.